Did you want to ask something first? You had your... Okay. Okay. Me? Uh, um, well, I have a question. I don't know if you have finished, but... Um, I had a question because I asked somebody who was a photographer once, what was the, the most pithy advice that they would give about how to take a good photograph? And they said, get closer. You know, just get closer. And I thinking, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is that I'm wondering if that is, uh, comes out of the vulnerability of being open to, the, to what's in front of you and being able to step into it. Um, you know, a lot of times, especially with, if you're taking a picture, picture of a person, you know, there's that delicate distance that you keep, and yet then it looks like just a a little snapshot, you know, kind of, it's okay, but if you got closer, there would be more immediacy. To well, it you. depends on what your perception is. Mm -hmm. So if you see somebody, because you don't want to put, give yourself rules that are going to dictate, you know, you're going to be dismissing your perceptions. So if you, normally we see close up, because that's how we, we are, that's how we see. Not that we don't see far away, and sometimes what we see far away if you can see the whole thing and, and that's your perception, you want to be able to express that. And the perception is not close up, it's far away. But 99% of what we see, I'd say most of our seeingness is like a normal lens. It's like 50 millimeters, it's like out there. It's within 15, 10, 15 feet. So, but that's not really a rule, although it's, it's, it's pretty intimate. So I would say there's there's some truth to that, but I wouldn't I wouldn't make it. Um, I I think it's important to be open and available, and to to start to see your world as it is, and and not to complicate it. And those are sort of the big those are the big tasks right up front. And if you can do that, then you you're going to be more able to see what's out there without putting a template on it. It's very seductive. Fields, landscape, you know, mountains, all that. Well, those are just things. They're just ideas on some level. But they're not always. And if you can do this, if you could do this really really uh strongly, then the world is going to be telling you what you're seeing. I mean, you know, there's this there's going to be these I mean, you know, what, mind, mind is just going to be, it's just going to happen as it happens. The main thing is, is you don't want to get in the way. Because it'll be fresh if you didn't think it up, or you didn't try to make it better, or you didn't doubt it, or you, did, you know, second thought it, all those things. It's that first thing, if that's open. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know who that is. <laughs> Michael's granddaughter calls him every it's day. The <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Michael said uh, that normally we dismiss the ordinary in favor of what we think people are going to be impressed by, or what we we think is more extraordinary things that are worthy of photographing and, 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 and documenting. That's a lot of what we do with photographs, but if we sort of get beyond that and we start to, and I, I mentioned that in, in this introduction, if we can start to see what is in our immediate intimate environment, which Michael and I shoot all the time. Like if you go to our Facebook page, you're just gonna see our, our intimate world all the time, day to day. That's really what we shoot because there we are sitting at the table at a glass and then reflection on the table, we just go, oh, who's not gonna, who's not gonna take that, you know? So we just do. We don't try to repress it. And uh, really, people connect to to the intimate things. This is our world. And once you really start sharing that with people, they're so appreciative because they love their world too. Only they didn't think anyone would care, so they they just dismiss it. But really, that's where a lot of the joy in this is. I have a question <clears throat> with, uh, with your beginners, people that begin uh, with your classes now. Where, what do you find or what do you see as the difficulties that they often have in, in, in your classes? 
You mean people who've never photographed before, or people who just come to the the first class of all kinds of well, levels of experience? Well, obviously, there's you know level where people they, they don't they don't know how to use a camera, so they're when they're learning. That's a whole learning process, I, I'm sure. Mm. So, oh, cam cameras are pretty simple now. That, that's true, but they're they're also complicated. There are things that you need to know how to yeah. do. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, if you if we assume that they uh, have a certain facility with with operating the camera, what what do you see uh, difficulties that they have? Well, I think one of the main things, well, everybody has the same things they're working with pretty much, which is they have to start to learn to recognize when they're not available and then consciously make the decision and the intention to be available. So that's something we all have to do. So that changes everything. That changes the whole uh quality of the experience. You've, you've, you've said, I, I am going to be available. I'm going to turn this, I'm going to turn all this inner preoccupation, I'm going to turn it outwards to whatever comes. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is we have to work with our incessant labeling mechanism and relaxing that. Just even to provide gaps in it so that fresh experience can come in. So those are the two things, the, really, the pretty, pretty much the big deals that are between us and Fresh Seeing. And, and then there's a little bit more complicated things with people who are very experienced photographers. Sometimes they don't really believe that it's uh, necessarily something that's desirable to abandon uh, technique and um, uh, templates. Well, you know, a lot of photographers, and I, you know, this is not critical, by the way, but they speak, and Michael's a perfect example. He went to photography school. He learned all the templates, all the ways of shooting, all the ways of taking portraits, all of it. So he accomplished it, was a successful portrait, all kinds of uh, photography in, in Toronto. And it was very difficult to dismantle that structure. And there's a lot of years that go into it. And there's a lot of years that go into uh, uh, complicated equipment and its use and all of the post uh, processing software that's available now. So they have a little bit of a different and I think more difficult challenge which is they want to see fresh. Usually the reason that they're there is because they want to take better photographs. This is just not about taking better photographs. That's not what it's about. And, and we always get photographers in our classes and we say Re look at the film you know, look through the site, read what's there, and come if you want. But if they really ultimately believe that they're, and this happens all the time, that, they, that they're going to come out taking better f photographs, they do. They take a lot better photographs. But ultimately, they got what they wanted, and they l didn't get the rest. So for people who are more interested in having a, a level of experience in their life that's more profound, more direct, more passionate, more alive, and totally beyond the templates, that's also there for people who that's what they really want. That's both there. Uh, I mean, for us, of course, uh, we love expressing our experience. And I think that's really for us having the direct experience of, and not only that, and I think my book goes into this, this is not just about photography. I mean, it's, it's about how you live. Can you look at your, whatever it is, and just see them without, where are you from, what language do you speak, how educated are you, are you just part of some kind of group that I don't like? I mean, can you, can you actually, and I can tell you this too, it doesn't matter how much meditation you've done. There's all kinds of little things that you start to be able to see really clearly. And it's not even, it's, it's almost like a metaphor. The way you see the world and, and the way you're willing to accept the world as it is, visually, is no different than 
anything else how you live? And can you express yourself with your experience? Can you express your experience? First, can you be confident that you had an experience? Can you understand what that experience was? And can you express that experience with clarity and confidence? Well, those are the three things I just told you are the basis for, for Mixon. They're also the basis for being a, a genuine, open, caring, connecting human being on this planet. So it affects how you have your relationships, how open you are to expressing yourself, uh, can, can you do it in a non-aggressive way? Can you just be? Can you just be still? All that, it, it just filters through your whole life. And that's my last chapter in the book is, is the well-met life. Fully met. Fully met life, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Good realization. That's the starting place. Part of the reason I wrote this book was for people who haven't done this, don't photograph in this way, haven't been exposed to this. And the other group I did was for the people who have. Because when you present a practice such as this, that is based on non-referential experience, and that is non-conceptual in its nature. It's challenging because, as you say, you think you're having direct experience. And that's just the rub. And, and we all do that. How do, we, how do we come back? When we see that, how do we come back? And what are we coming back to? And then, so the more you catch yourself sort of offset, you just come back, and the more you come back, the more you start to want to be back, and the more your passion develops for the taste of the real thing. And it's just a matter of just developing confidence in your own experience. There's nothing like it. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here tonight. I really appreciated you all for coming. Thank you.